Shalom, Mubaraka, Miss Paka, peace and blessings, family. In this video, we will be talking about negative ions from a Levitical perspective, from a Torahical standpoint. We will go in and explain the Kohenology, the science of the priest, of how the cleansing laws are scientifically accurate and exactly why the laws make sense. Now, what we have to understand is negative ions come from the motion of water molecules, specifically when the water molecules are broken and they are basically what you would call ionized, right? So what's ionized is the negative charge, which is one electron that has changed in the outer ring. Now, negative ions not only boost your mood, but they also increase your bioelectric field. Thus, they lift your spirit. Negative ions can be found in sunlight, wind, waterfalls, forests, candles, rain, mountains, forests, or I said that twice. <laughs> That's embarrassing. All forms of running water, springs, all plants, including sage, especially when burning, soil, amethyst, and tourmalines. That's because these two stones are known for actually collapsing uh, or ionizing the water molecules around them, right? As well as wood fires, right? So let's just look at this again. Imagine a place where there's waterfalls, forests, you know, rain, mountains, springs. You know, what place do you imagine? I imagine the Holy Land. Because that's exactly where, how the Holy Land is, man. Western North America. People go over there and they don't want to come back because it's such good vibes. It's such good vibes because of all the negative ions in the air. And, and you know, mountains, they... You know, it's a fact that when you live in the mountains or anywhere that's highly elevated, your life expectancy will be a lot longer. There's a lot of, um, the closer you get to the clouds, <laughs> you know, obviously the more negative ions you're going to be surrounded by, right? So with that being said, you know, mountains is a good environment to live in. You, Your life expectancy raises because of living in the mountains and it's actually the healthiest place to live unlike where i live by louisiana which is a very low area you know we get flooded out every year it's too low it's by the ocean you know what i'm saying i've never seen a mountain in my life i've only been in texas and louisiana and alabama and mississippi None of those places have mountains, man. Texas got a little mountains, but they too far away from me because Texas is so huge. I've never been to those parts that do have mountains. And let me tell you, though, one day I will be around mountains. You know what I'm saying? Because it's good for you. So we're going to explain exactly what I mean by they lift your spirit, right? Let's go. So these are the spiritual benefits of negative ions. In the first picture, we see before negative ion exposure, the aura field or the electromagnetic field. What do we know about aura? In Hebrew, the word light is aur, spelled exactly like aura, except it doesn't have an A at the end. So our aur or light that our body produces, we literally have a light that we cannot see because it's beyond our visual range. We can only see uh, up to 750 terahertz, but our bioelectric field is 800 to 1000 terahertz meaning they're beyond our um, visual range it's basically like UV radiation it's actually our, our, our bio, bioelectric field is right the cross between visual light and UV radiation right in between that is where our bioelectric field sits that's why some people are able to see an aura but nobody can see UV radiation before negative ion exposure your aura field can be broken up and weak. Maybe because of uncleanliness, maybe because of alcohol, who knows, right? But 
when this happens your spiritual shield is broken negative or dangerous energies can creep through when you're uh basically your shield i like to say or your biologic field or your electromagnetic field or your aura whatever you want to call it is all the same thing when this is broken and weakened what happens now is um energies from the outside that are negative can come into you right and these energies can be you know anger lust uh you know all these things as well as demonic spirits uh as well as dangerous energies like if you're going inside of the tabernacle right if you go in the tabernacle the spirit of yah will seep through into that uh that that broken bioelectric field and you die because your body is not meant to handle that right y'all y'all only puts his spirit on people who have a strong bioelectric field because they are the only people who can handle such energy you understand and if you go into the tabernacle you're going into the presence of the spirit of yah and if you have a weak bioelectric field you die you understand there is a possibility that you can walk in the tabernacle unclean and still live it just depends on how unclean you are because there is levels right if i step on a dead uh fly which is unclean on my way to walking into the tabernacle uh, i'm not i'm not so unclean to where i die you know what i'm saying but if i touch the dead body before i walk into the tabernacle i am so unclean that i die there's levels to this stuff right so with this being said guys there is a possibility not all uncleanliness will break will break your biologic field but y'all tells you to avoid uncleanness just in case it does right so because if it breaks your electro uh, biologic field and you walk into my tabernacle you will die that's what you will say he, he doesn't want you to die so he gives you strict clean versus unclean laws now after a uh, negative ion exposure you are spiritually protected your bio fluorescence shines right your light shines right so and there's many scriptures that shows that us as humans have lights attached to us right we do have lights attached to us the only person who could actually their light was so bright that it could be seen was who moses but everybody already has a light now these are the mental and physical benefits of negative ions now negative ions can kill mold bacteria and viruses they increase serotonin which makes you happy it's the happy hormone they alleviate depression relieve stress boost energy purify the blood restore cells lower blood pressure so in other terms they contribute to a longer life a longer more happy life so what are these negative ions how can i get myself exposed to these negative ions well like i said negative ions come from sunlight wind waterfalls forests candles rain mountains all forms of running water springs all plants so surround yourself by plants including sage especially when burned burn yourself some sage is real good soil walk on that bare soil barefooted man walk on that soil barefooted amethyst and tourmalines get yourself some stones wood fire burn some burn some wood every now and again right so those are things that will increase serotonin alleviate depression relieve stress those are things that boost energy purify blood those are things that restore cells lower blood pressure uh you know kill mold bacteria so so let's deal with the uh let's deal with how it's levitical what does this have to do with levitical laws or cleansing laws let's find out negative ions will raise your vibration that means the vibration of your bioelectric field and possibly make you ceremonially clean or to hoard. So let's look at running water. 
negative ions from running water cleanse you as we know uh running water is an abundant source of negative ions in fact they say niagara falls this is not a picture of niagara falls this is a picture of shoshone falls in idaho one of my uh, favorite waterfalls and it's in the holy land it's very beautiful right but niagara falls is much larger and niagara falls has the most negative ions in the world oh my goodness yahuwah is amazing because niagara falls was created when yahuwah destroyed babylon he destroyed it with a great flood but that great flood from that great flood came a lot of negative ions which actually basically replaced that negative energy that babylon gave off with positive energy Ooh, i like that Ooh, i like that yahuwah is amazing Leviticus 15, we already know about all the scriptures that say bathe in water, bathe in running water, right? I don't have to read all those scriptures. Hopefully, you know the clean laws by now. Um, but whenever you're unclean, the scripture tells you to bathe yourself and your clothing in running water. And that will make you clean by the evening, right? Now, negative ions also come from fire, right? Negative ions from fire is also cleansing, right? So there's a lot of ways you can get negative ions from fire, whether it be candles. Remember, there was candles in the tabernacle, right? The, the, the seven candlesticks, right? Seven candlesticks. That was negative ions the priests were around. The priests, actually, the priests were around more negative ions than probably anybody, right? They had amethyst stone on their breastplate. They were burning wood constantly. They're around a lot of fire. They're around the candles, right? They were around the sunlight a lot. Um, you know, because y'all held back the rain during the sacrifices, over the sacrifice, held back the rain over the, over the tabernacle so the rain wouldn't burn the fire out, right? So he was around a lot of sunlight. You know, the priest had to walk barefooted on the dust, so he was always walking um on the soil so he the priest was surrounded by so much negative ions isn't that amazing y'all y'all bless his priest with such good energy right so with that being said look at what it says in numbers chapter 31 verse 23 everything that may abide the fire you shall make it go through the fire and it shall be clean nevertheless it shall be purified with water of separation and all that abideth not the fire ye shall make it go through the water so y'all are saying if if anything will last in the fire and not burn it should be cleaned with fire so if you got a pot let's say your mama just gave you a pot right but she been cooking pork in that pot right so what you would have to do is burn that pot put it under fire that's how y'all would prefer us to clean things that can abide by fire because fire is actually better at cleansing things than water is. But the problem with fire is if it's not, you know, metal, it will burn it. So only metal things or, you know, only metal things should abide the fire, should go through the fire, right? So fire does a better job with cleaning you can probably still cleanse a metal pot with water but yahuwah would prefer fire because fire does a better job it adds more negative ions right and you know fire also kills bacteria kills germs we know that it kills everything right so back then people probably didn't even know what bacteria was so these laws are not made up clearly these laws are not made up. So anyway, you know, fire is very, very cleansing. It's very full of negative ions. It, it definitely increases serotonin. You ever been around a bonfire with your family? You ever sat down with your family? Y'all yeah, just talking around a fire. Do you know what that does? That actually triggers ancestral genetic memory. Because believe it or not, a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, three hundred years ago, and before that, that was what every single night looked like for your ancestors. Did you know that? If they were not asleep, they were around a fire. If it was the winter time, every single night, 
they were around a fire. This is your grand, your great grandparents, and all the way back, even before that, you know, to Adam, all the way back to Adam and Eve. We we are living in a time where we don't we're separated from fire. We don't build fires anymore, which is not good. We live in a society that's separated from negative ions, separated from nature, separated from the forest, separated from fire, separated from this, and we're actually surrounding ourselves with positive ions. Positive ions come from Wi-Fi, uh, computers, microwaves, you know, man-made things produce um, positive ions as well as pollution, pollution in the air produce positive ions. Positive ions are killing you. They are draining you of your vitality. You understand? They are making you sluggish. They are making you lack energy. They are making you lack happiness. So because society switched over from being primarily full of negative ions to primarily full of positive ions, why do you think depression is so high for no reason? Depression, anxiety, stress, suicide, because we're we're away from things like fire. Fire is what keeps you going. You ever just when you when you burn fire, you could you just sit and stare at the fire because it's just so amazing and from centuries for for a thousand years we just wondered why fire is so beautiful why why fire is the way it is why why it's so important why it looks like how it looks why it's so beautiful right and on top of that fire is the closest thing you can possibly get to to the spiritual realm out of all physical matter fire is the only physical matter that's one step away from being not matter at all you know what i'm saying so with that being said, you know, fire is something very special, but it's not the fire itself that produces the negative ions. All right. It's the fuel that the fire is burning, whether it be oil from plants like the candlesticks, whether it be wax from plants or from honey or whether it be wood if you burn fire from those fuels that fire will produce negative ions but if you have a fire from you know uh, chemical fire starters like a cigarette lighter or a you know you know other types of whether it be diesel or whatever you're using to fuel your fi fires, any type of chemical, that's not going to produce negative ions. It's not going to make you happy because it's just burning, combusting chemicals, you know. But a natural fire out of plants, out of oils, out of wax, that those type of fires release negative ions, release positive energy. And especially because of the wood that you're burning. Wood. We're going to get to wood and how wood is so important. Plants used to cleanse and purify. Hyssop, which is sage, in another video in Kohenology chapter 3, I will break down why hyssop truly is sage. Not only any sage, North American sage brush is the real hyssop of the Bible, and I'm going to explain that in Kohenology chapter 3. But we're just going to go with it for now with no proof. I did kind of prove it in my last Patreon uh, post. But my YouTubers, they won't see that as of yet. So for my YouTubers who's watching this, just go with it with no proof. Uh, hyssop sage was dipped in water and sprinkled to purify uncleanliness of death. See in Numbers chapter 19 verse 18. And a clean person shall take hyssop. And dip it in water and sprinkle it upon the tent and upon the vessels and upon the persons that were there and upon him that touched a bone or a slain or one dead or a grave. And the tent is talking about a tent that somebody died in. And the, the, the water that was sprinkled from the hyssop plant, the sage plant, was then, would, would then clean everything. It would raise the vibration of everything that it touched. Also, hyssop sage was burned and the ashes were used to make water for the purification. Remember, hyssop or sage 
What do we know about Sage? Sage releases tons of negative ions when you burn it. That's why it puts you in a good mood. Man, I tell you, when I burn Sage, I have crazy good dreams. When I say good dreams, I mean vivid. They're, they're not good. Like last night I had a dream of I'm just driving in this KKK's killing a whole bunch of black people, just cutting them open and hanging them on trees and stuff. Yeah, they're not good dreams, but they're very vivid. I don't know, maybe that dream meant something. I have a lot of symbolic dreams and visions all the time, but that's besides the point. Anyway, let's read Numbers chapter 19, verse 6. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning heifer. Now we have three types of plants mentioned here. Hyssop, which is sage, cedar wood, and scarlet. Now, cedar wood does have a very nice aromatic smell to it. And it also is very good for your emotions, right? Certain woods, when you burn them, is really, really good for you. Really, really good. The smell turns up your mood and everything. And also, scarlet. What is scarlet? Scarlet is what they'll tell you what the Strong's definition says is scarlet is from a worm, which we know is not true. Why would we use the mashed up guts from the worm to, to make it red? We know clearly that our ancestors were not doing that, right? Because that's an unclean animal. That's an unclean animal. A sacrifice is especially holy unto Yah. And this was a sacrifice. This sacrifice was the purification sacrifice. And its ashes were used to make water for purification. Now also, in Leviticus 14, hyssop, which is sage, and cedar wood, and scarlet, which is amaranth flowers, was used to make cleansing solution for leprosy. So what are amaranth flowers? Let's just, let's just talk about that for a second. Amaranth flowers are the real flowers that scarlet is in scripture. It's a red flower that is native to the Mojave Desert in Western North America. And Native Americans have been using the amaranth plant to make red dye, violet dye, purple dye, and pink dye. Because the amaranth comes in many different shades and hues, right? But this was specifically about the red amaranth. And the red amaranth is really important because it's a plant. And plants have what? Negative ions. Wood has what? Negative ions. Sage has what? Negative ions. So all three of these things have negative ions. And what are they used for? Cleansing. Not only any cleansing. Cleansing leprosy, which is the most unclean thing. So unclean that... When you had leprosy, you had to be separated from everybody else until your stuff was gone, right? So leprosy is the most unclean thing in scripture. And they're using three plants, three, to cleanse them, right? So Leviticus 14 and 4. Then the priest shall command to take him that is to be cleansed, two birds, alive and clean, and cedar wood, and scarlet and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. As for the living bird, he shall take it, and the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over running water. So again, we see the running water, right? And he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from leprosy seven times, and shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. So why are they using bird blood and stuff like that? Because, again, this has to do with vibration, the frequency, something about the bird blood, Yahuwah knows that it's going to do something, right? That's all that it is. I don't really know right now what's the significance of, of b the blood of animals. I don't really know. It has something to do with like some spiritual stuff. The Levitical laws with the priest, I love them, man. They're so it, it sounds like witchcraft, but it's not. It's like it's like righteous craft. 
You know what I'm saying? Because Yah is, is showing us different ways, but we're doing it for righteous things instead of wicked things. Because witches, they make potions and stuff. They use they use animal blood, bird blood in their potions, and they use certain plants, and they you know burn certain things just like what the priest did, right? But the witches are trying to do stuff for their own personal gain. I'm gonna make this person fall in love with me. I'm gonna kill this person. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna kill this person. Take their money. I'm gonna kill my husband. Take their money. You know that's what witches do, right? That's why y'all said their abominations kill them. But the priest, the only thing the priest did was good. You know, you know what I'm saying? They cleanse people. They atone for the sins of Israel. So. Yah is in tune with the spiritual world. We got to understand witches, they learn from demons. They learn from fallen angels. Demons are fallen angels, right? So they learn from fallen angels. They call upon them. They talk to them, right? And they get their knowledge from them. But we don't talk to fallen angels. We got, we got our knowledge from Yah himself. And that's why some of our practices look like witchcraft, but it's not. It's just we're, de we're, dwelling, we're delving into the spiritual realm righteously because Yah is commanding us certain things to do certain ingredients to make you understand and i i really love it like a lot of people find these laws uncomfortable but i don't when I, before i die i'm gonna go to the holy land and sacrifice 20 20 bulls for you know to atone for the 20 centuries of your of israel's wickedness ever since the time we left the land and Hopefully, Yahuwah blesses me with wealth that I may accomplish this. But like I told you guys before, I am of the line of Aaron. That's why I have this knowledge to teach you this stuff. Yahuwah has revealed it to me, and I'm revealing it to you so the children of Yasserah can understand. Uh, the, the scripture says, and the priest lives shall have knowledge. And that's what I'm giving you now, knowledge. And not, in, not only any knowledge, knowledge of the law. That's what I'm giving you guys, knowledge of the law. And why the law is important. Every single law. People skip over the Levitical laws. But I'm explaining why they're important as well. We don't do them right now. Because we're in a strange land. But like I told you. I'm going to go to the land. I'm going to go to uh, Jerusalem. Mount Mount Moriah. Um, or probably Mount Sinai. And I'm going to sacrifice unto Yahuwah. You know what I'm saying? That's how you draw near the... the one of the words for sacrifice actually means to draw near. Right? That's how you draw near to Yahuwah, by sacrificing. And, the, you know, the whole um, New Testament ideology got us believing animal sacrifice was so bad, so wrong. And JC had to do away with it and all this other stuff. And, man, it's all bull. It's, it's utter bull. Now, there is other ways to raise your vibration with negative ions, but they don't cleanse you. For example, walking barefooted on the ground, that will raise your vibration, but it's not gonna cleanse you, you understand? Or sit standing out in sunlight, that's gonna raise your vibration, but it's not gonna cleanse you. Having crystals, that's gonna raise your vibration because of negative ions, but it's not gonna cleanse you, right? So there's, there's other ways as well, or, or being standing in the breeze, Oh, don't you love the feeling of being in breeze? Breeze feels good. It makes you happy. That's because there's a lot of negative ions hitting you in the face when you stand in the breeze. But guess what? It doesn't cleanse you, does it? So not all negative ions will cleanse you. But when it has to do with water or fire or plants, they will. They can. They have the power to do such. So anyway, Shalom, Mubarakah, Mizpakah, peace and blessing family.